Yeah, today's episode 21 of my regular feature where I share with you some of my latest purchases from the perfume parlour. Today's a fairly big one with a whopping eight bottle extract spray haul to go through with you. And uh, I can tell you that there's some real crackers in this list, including a couple of uh, really good discontinued designer ones that I was uh, very pleased to see available in the perfume parlour's huge library of copy scents. I'm uh, pretty excited to uh, get into this and tell you all about some of these. So to find out what delights I've got for you in store in today's episode stay tuned to mags frags Yes, hello again, everybody, and thank you very much for tuning in to this latest Perfume Parlour episode of Mags Frags. I'm Paul, and if this is the uh, first time that you've stumbled across my channel, then hello and welcome aboard. And if you are looking at purchasing your first copy fragrances uh, from the Perfume Parlour and you need a little bit of inspiration, then you've definitely come to the right place because I've now got over 30 Perfume Parlour review videos, which you can now uh, access uh, via a, a dedicated playlist on the homepage of my channel. So don't forget to also feel free to browse through them at your leisure. But before I begin today's rundown, if you are interested in picking up any of these uh, fragrances that feature in today's video to try out for yourself, you can use my unique discount code to get yourself 10% off your first order, which I will leave a direct link to down in the description. The link will uh, direct you to a login page and uh, you will be asked to create a login name and a password. But once you've logged in and you've made your purchases, uh, your discount will automatically be applied and it'll be waiting at the checkout for you. And as always guys, just a quick disclaimer, I don't work for the Perfume Parlour and this video is in no way sponsored by them in any way, so all these opinions that you're about to hear on these fragrances are my own opinions and I did buy them all with my own money. I do however receive a small commission just for uh, by, for recommending you to join their website, so just by clicking on the link and uh, making your purchases, you'll save you 10% while supporting the channel and helping me to bring you some more free content in the future. Okay, so the first one in today's haul goes by the name of Secret Man. And the perfume palette code on this one is 1499. This one is a copy of the now discontinued 1 million Privé by Paco Rabanne, which is widely regarded in the fragrance community as the best flanker in the whole 1 million lineup. So why they chose to uh, discontinue this one is uh, a bit of a mystery to me, to be honest. But the top notes in this are Cinnamon and Blood Mandarin. In the mid, we've got myrrh and tobacco. And in the base, there's tonka beans and patchouli. Okay, so this one opens up bright and spicy with the cinnamon and the blood mandarin blending with the ambery myrrh note. And it comes off smelling quite boozy, even though there's uh, no actual boozy notes listed in the note breakdown. It's fairly sweet and playful, but the Privé version was never anywhere near as sweet as the original 1 million, so in my opinion it was always more grown up and sophisticated smelling. And I think the Privé should have actually been the elixir flanker uh, in the 1 million line. It starts out uh, with like a uh, spiced amber type of chord, which does stay throughout the life of the scent and it doesn't change that much over time. Uh, but as it dries down, the tobacco, the tonka beans and patchouli start to come through. So you do get some warm, earthy depth. It's a, a really stunning cold weather scent or a, a perfect one to wear on a, like a night out. It's masculine, sexy and it just oozes class. And this perfume parlor version captures 1 million Privé perfectly. It's also really strong and long lasting so if you uh, never got the chance to try the original version out for yourself then this is definitely worth picking up and trying out. It's uh, a pretty safe blind buy and I can't see many people uh, really disliking it so a really good one to uh, start off today's haul. Okay so this next one goes by the name of Second Intrinsic and the perfume parlour code on this one is 0268. This is a copy of Gaultier 2 by Jean-Paul Gaultier, which uh, came out in 2005. And it did get discontinued for many years, but it was relaunched by the brand last year, uh, so it is now backed by popular demand. It's a very simple fragrance containing only three uh, fragrance notes of amber, vanilla and musk. But for me, it's the amber that kind of stands out the most and steals the show, with the other two notes kind of just playing a, a more of a supporting role in the background, which they just add like a, a bit of powdery sweetness. It's classed as a, a unisex fragrance, but in my opinion, it does lean ever so slightly on the feminine side, maybe because of that creamy vanilla in the base. So you'd need to uh, enjoy warmer, sweeter type fragrances to really dig this one. 
it is better suited to uh, wearing cooler temperatures or it or like on a, an evening in the warmer months uh, and it is quite a soft and comforting aroma so it's going to be more suited to like a, a relaxed setting when you're heading out for a meal or maybe going on a date night rather than uh, to wear for a rowdy night out on the town the performance on this one is pretty strong uh, with a really good projection which uh, can get a little bit overpowering if you go heavy on the sprays and it does linger for a good seven hours giving you constant wafts so definitely no slouch and overall this is uh, a really solid pickup if, especially if you enjoy amber dominant fragrances and it's definitely worth trying out okay so the third one in today's haul is called lisbon wood and the perfume parlor code on this is 1199. This is a copy of Bois de Portugal by Creed, which is a woody citrus fragrance that was first launched in 1987. The top note in this is bergamot, in the mid it's just lavender, and in the base we've got ambergris, vetiver, sandalwood and cedar. Okay, so this opens up really crisp and fresh and has a slightly spicy uh, smelling opening with the bergamot and lavender combining with the earthy base notes pr to produce like a, a really bright and airy aroma with a really uplifting outdoorsy summery feel to it. It's a really clean and crisp uh, smelling aroma that's meant to remind you of a Portuguese garden, uh, but I've never been to Portugal myself, so I can't really confirm this claim. However, I have been to Spain a couple of times, which is close enough, and uh, you definitely do get a summery Mediterranean vibe from it. The bergamot hits you from the initial spray, and its uh, tart zestiness uh, really comes through, but then it quickly develops into more of a, like a spicy, woody aroma, with also some saltiness from the ambergris. It's a bold, masculine scent with a really classy and timeless character uh, that you can wear all year round as a one fragrance signature scent. This perfume parlor version is absolutely spot on in terms of its accuracy and I think I'd fool even the most hardened Creed fanboy into believing that this was the real deal if I was like wearing it on a night out. And dare I say that the uh, performance on this copy version is possibly a touch longer lasting than the original Creed uh, which is crazy considering it's 10 times less expensive. You'll get a, a really nice regular waft from it uh, for around about the six or seven hours mark. And it has a, a decent moderate projection that will that people around you'll definitely be able to smell, but it's not it never gets really loud or aggressive. It's a really uh, elegant gentleman's fragrance. It's almost impossible to dislike. So if you haven't yet tried this one, it's a really safe blind buy to add to your uh, next perfume parlor order. Okay, so from one that's extremely mass appealing to one that's going to be a little bit more challenging for uh, some of you guys out there. This is called Heart of England and the perfume parlor code on this one is 0967. This one is a copy of London from the Tom Ford Private Blend Collection, which is another one that was discontinued a while ago, so almost impossible now to get hold of uh, an, a bottle of the original. The top notes in this are black pepper, saffron, cardamom, coriander, cumin and coffee. In the mid we've got geranium, jasmine, incense and labdanum. And the base notes in this are agar wood, musk, birch and cedar. Yes, yeah, so if you're uh, fairly familiar with your fragrances, uh, you can probably tell what you're going to get from this one simply by the notes listed in that note breakdown. We've got lots of exotic spices up top, including saffron, and more noticeably the cumin, uh, which can be a real turn-off for some people if it's uh, too prominent because of its animalic aroma, which some people can interpret as smelling a little bit like body odour. I am pleased to tell you though uh, that even though I can faintly detect it, it's certainly not too noticeable and the other spicy top notes and also the coffee note definitely dilute its potency. This certainly doesn't mess around though and uh, it, it kind of uh, pretty much let, lets you know instantly where it's heading and that's uh, straight to a, like a dark, spicy, smoky, leathery heart and uh, a deep woody base. This is uh, a kind of fragrance I'd normally describe as like a rock star scent with a really gritty and edgy character. And to me, it reminds me of uh, going into like an old record shop or a vintage clothing store with old wooden floors and a bit of a musty, dank aroma in the air. There's a fragrant smoky incense and a semi-sweet leather accord that further adds to the vintage experience. And that's basically what this is. It's uh, more like a, a nostalgic experience uh, that will just take you off into a different place. 
It's a really unique and interesting smell that's complex but yet very addictive and it's uh, one of those fragrances that you just can't stop going in for uh, more sniffs time and time again. It's one I'd wear in the uh, cooler months for sure and a really good situation that I could see this working perfectly in is if you're kind of heading out to a gig to watch a band and you're just dressed casually in like a leather jacket or a denim jacket. But like I say though, this is not a mass appealing uh, scent for your casual wearer. It's more for anyone who's pretty deep into niche perfumery uh, that really wants to stand out and make a bit of a statement. Again, this is a brilliant copy with a room filling projection and you're going to get eight hours of longevity out of it. So if you're looking for something a little bit more edgy and out there, then definitely give this one a try and let me know what you think of it. Okay, so this next one in today's haul goes by the name of Quick Florence. And the perfume parlor code on this is 0595. This is a copy of Gucci Rush for Men from the year 2000, which again is another discontinued designer fragrance that was really popular back in the day. In my opinion, it was always uh, re really well ahead of its time and, uh, and I'm kind of shocked that they discontinued it because, uh, to be honest, I haven't been uh, that blown away by many recent Gucci releases. Uh, so it was kind of nice to take a trip down uh, memory lane with this Perfume Parlor version. The top notes in this are Cypress and Lavender. In the mid, we've got Cedar, ju yeah, Juniper and Sandalwood. And the base notes in this are White Musk and Patchouli. Yeah, so this is fantastic, and as soon as I smelled it, it just kind of transported me straight back in time. It's a spicy, woody fragrance that's dominated by the winter evergreen top notes, um, but you can, this is only going to last for the first hour or so, and then it transforms more into a, a smooth, milky sandalwood base, which is also supported by this cedar and some clean white musk, and overall, it's just a scent that's super likeable and mass appealing. The juniper is definitely the most prominent note from the initial spray through into the dry down, but this blends really nicely with the cypress and the uh, the mild lavender note, and it starts out really cool and crisp with a, a bit of a spiciness to it. But then slowly but surely the wood starts to come through and it just ends up being a bit of a sandalwood bomb which is uh, propped up by the other earthy base notes that just add a bit of depth and longevity. It is a, a little bit synthetic smelling, um, as was the original, uh, but it's a great fragrance for the spring and the autumn seasons. Um, and I said the performance on it is uh, pretty decent, and I reckon you're going to get about six hours before it becomes like a, a faint skin scent. I no longer have a, a bottle of the original, unfortunately, to uh, test them side by side. But like I said earlier, as soon as I first sprayed it, I recognised exactly what it was without even having to read the label on the back, which is uh, good enough for me. So if you fancy uh, a really charming masculine scent that smells crisp and clean, uh, then this guy is uh, a really uh, solid pickup. Okay, so we've got three more to go, and this sixth one is called Arabian Words. And the perfume parlor code on this is 1018. This is a copy of Kalamat by Arabian Oud, uh, which is one of the more expensive Middle Eastern fragrances, which tends to go for upwards of £100 a bottle, uh, but it's really popular and sought after. The top notes in this are Blueberry and Star Anise. Uh, in the mid, we've got Cashmere Wood, Rosemary and uh, Floral Notes. And the base notes in this are Amber, Musk and Honey. Okay, so this one's a beautiful, smooth, ambery fragrance with a really soft and relaxing scent profile. The opening is fairly bright and it's the star in eggs which I uh, pick up on instantly and you get like a prominent medicinal licorice type aroma for the first few minutes uh, but as soon as it settles down you then get, lo you get lots of the sweetness that comes through from the amber and the honey and uh, it kind of reminds me a little bit of honey, honey Aoud, I always struggle, uh, struggle saying that, Honey Aoud from Montal uh, that I reviewed uh, a few uh, months back. I don't really get much in the way of the blueberry note in the opening, uh, but I suppose it just blends in with the other sweeter notes. And same goes for the rose note and the other florals. I'm not particularly a lover of the rose note in general, so thankfully it's not too noticeable in this one, and then you don't end up uh, smelling like a Turkish delight like you do with uh, some Middle Eastern-inspired fragrances. 
It is quite dense and syrupy sweet, but there's nothing too challenging or complex in this one. In fact, this uh, would be a great gateway to for anyone who's thinking about crossing over from designer fragrances into uh, like more niche or Middle Eastern scents. After it fully dries down, it develops into a really warm and cosy gourmand type fragrance with a sweet, velvety, smooth and well-rounded aroma. And for the most part, it's in a similar kind of ballpark to the likes of Carlisle by Parfums de Marley or Mancera's uh, red, to red Tobacco in terms of its sweet and comforting dry down. So if you like the kind of those type of rich and indulgent smelling gourmand fragrances, then you'll really enjoy this one. It's a bit like walking past a bakery uh, with its doors open first thing in the morning and smelling all the warm pastries. It smells really good and it's absolutely uh, ideal for the colder months of the year. In terms of how it performs, the projection isn't uh, that heavy and cloying and it does tend to sit fairly close to the skin but it does last for hours uh, and you will get nice little constant wash from it throughout the day. It's one that I'd highly recommend that you try out for yourself, uh, especially if you like fragrances like I've just mentioned, like Carlisle and Red, uh, Red Tobacco, etc. But again, it might just be a little bit too much if you're young or you're just brand new to fragrances. So just approach it with uh, slight caution. Okay, so the penultimate one in today's haul is called Young Man. And the perfume palette code on this is 11107.63. This is a copy of Body Kouros by YSL, which is an amber spicy fragrance that, by the way, smells absolutely nothing like the original Kouros. The top notes in this are incense and eucalyptus. In the mid, we've got cedar wood and mace. And the base notes are camphor wood and benzoin. Yeah, so this one opens up uh, with a weird pairing of uh, opening notes that I've never actually come across before with the eucalyptus and the incense blended together. But it's the eucalyptus that dominates and it produces a cool, fresh opening with a bit of a minty, fresh quality, which opens up your airways and definitely grabs your attention. This is balanced out by the benzoin in the base, so there's a, a really nice amount of ambery sweetness in the background. And you'll get a, a really pleasant, uh, like a shaving gel type aroma that smells really enjoyable, but there's nothing really unique or anything that stands out about it. And unlike the original Koros, I wouldn't recognise this body Koros uh, flanker if someone walked past me in the street wearing it. That being said, I think the Body Koros is uh, much more modern smelling and mass appealing uh, and it's a fairly linear fragrance and it doesn't really develop and change that much uh, when you get into the dry down. But you lose some of the uh, the sharp medicinal, medicinal aroma from the opening and it's the amber that remains the constant accord throughout. I don't really get much in the way of woodiness from the uh, two actual woody notes that are listed uh, and for me it's just a, a pretty basic generic aroma that will just remind you of uh, a shower gel or aftershave bar uh, balm from, uh, that you've already got lying around in your bathroom. Again, the uh, the perfume parlour have nailed the accuracy of the original and it projects well for a couple of hours and then it fades away fairly quickly after the eucalyptus disappears and it becomes more of a mild skin scent after that. And uh, for me, it's uh, a decent smelling fragrance, but it just lacks uh, a little bit of character and uniqueness. And finally, I always like to throw in a little bit of a wacky one, a bit of a curveball. And this last one goes by the name of Sweetness. And the perfume parlor code on this is 1471. This is a copy of Sugar by Frank Bockley, uh, which I'm sure you can tell by the name is a super sweet gourmand fragrance with top notes of coconut, honey, cassis, uh, marshmallow and bergamot. In the mid we've got caramel, vanilla, peach, jasmine and pear. And the base notes are white musk, raspberry, violet and orange blossom. Yeah, so every single super sweet note that you can actually launch into a composition is uh, pretty much uh, included in this one. And yet, you end up with the sweetest aroma that you're ever likely to smell. There is also some florals in here, including jasmine, orange blossom and violet. So you do get a bit of a clean, soapy accord also. But if you were to take like a, a bunch of flowers and just like pour a jug of honey over the top and then empty a, a bag of sugar on top of that, you kind of get something uh, that's going to resemble what this is all about.
For me, it's too sickly sweet and leans way more feminine than it does masculine. So marketing this as a, a unisex fragrance is a little bit optimistic, in my opinion. Uh, and I can't see many men, if any, that would want to go out smelling, uh, smelling of this. However, as a general aroma, it's quite nice. And um, I suppose on women, uh, I could see it working well in the cooler months of the year. But for me, unfortunately, it's not one that I'd, uh, I'd wear or recommend for any other men to wear. I don't own the original, so I can't tell you how accurate this uh, this is personally. Uh, but I have tested enough perfume parlor fragrances now to know that uh, it'll be there or thereabouts in terms of how accurate it is. The performance is uh, really strong and it projects really well and lasts for hours and hours. So uh, if there's any women watching, it might be worth trying out if you like super sweet gooey perfumes. Uh, but this one will be uh, giving away to one of my fe uh, female family members probably because uh, I definitely won't be wearing it, that's for sure. Okay, so just a quick summary. I'd say that the highlights for me in today's haul have been the 1 million Privé copy, the Bois de Portugal and the uh, the Calamac copy. Uh, the Gaultier 2 and the Gucci Rust copies are both great, uh, but just maybe not quite as enjoyable as the first three that I mentioned. The Tom Ford London copy is the most challenging, even though I actually do quite like it. Uh, the Body Coros is really nice, but just a tad too generic for me personally. And the only one in today's haul that I wouldn't wear is the Sugar copy. So 7 out of 8 isn't too bad for uh, an 8 bottle fragrance haul. Okay, so that's about it for this latest Perfume Parlor haul video, but it won't be too long before the next one comes along, so if you don't want to miss any future episodes, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also uh, turn on the notifications bell, and that way you won't miss out on discovering your next perfect signature scent. And if you've got any uh, suggestions as to what Perfume Parlor fragrances you'd like me to talk about in future haul videos, then don't forget to drop me uh, a comment down in the comments section and I'll do my best to get hold of it and uh, tell you my thoughts on it for you. So until next time, thank you very much for watching. Stay safe, keep smelling fresh, and I'll see you very soon for another one. Bye bye for now.